right, all right, all right. Rad Nation, today we're gonna to be talking about automated exposure control or AEC. This is part one of our two-part series. Today we're talking about how does it work and we're gonna use making tea as an analogy for how does AEC work. So first off, in front of me, I have in this camp, the manual exposure and in this camp, the automated English breakfast control. And then Luca's gonna have his own tea here too. In both cases, when we make a cup of tea, what really matters is actually the amount of time, right? The how long that tea bag is in to steep for. So this is our AEC and this is our manual. AEC allows us a way to, in an automated method, change that time based on monitoring the exposure received at the detector. In our x-ray tube, you have the generator, which is providing your high voltage to the tube itself. Then the x-rays are gonna be generated within the tube, and then out comes a beam of x-rays, which would be shown here, for instance. Here you can see that the ion chambers are actually placed directly before the image receptor and these ion chambers can be calibrated out so that they're not visible in the actual image but the ion chambers are going to be used to measure the radiation dose which is getting to those ion chambers and hence the radiation dose which will be received at the image receptor if you'll notice we just covered the manual exposure because the idea is in a manual exposure we only are gonna check the time. So in a given amount of time, we're gonna see if that T is ready. Whereas in an automated exposure technique, we have some parameters. We know the kind of tea bag and we know how much milk we wanna add. Those are parameters like your KVP and like your density setting or the setting that you have to adjust the noise on the system. First off, we wanna talk about safety. With any automated exposure control system, you're going to have a backup timer. So within the generator itself, if the exposure control system is not working properly, there is a backup timer such that the x-rays will not be on for an infinite amount of time. Backup timer on some systems can be set, on others it's fixed, but it's there as a fallback to prevent significant overexposure in the case that the automated exposure system is not working properly or is not being used properly. There's also a set of user controls. So you are gonna start with a reference protocol, which will have a KVP defined within that reference protocol. So that's part of your user controls. Is what KVP is your base protocol working from? And then the other control that you have is an adjustment knob for dose. So if you want higher dose, you can turn it up. If you want lower dose, you can turn it down and you can use that to compensate for size of patient. For instance, the normal dose is typically called N and then different systems have certain numbers higher or lower, either three or five higher or lower. And that just indicates you're using either more or less dose. In a manual technique, you are setting the parameters ahead of time and the system is just going to acquire for that long. In an AEC technique, you can actually watch. So an AEC technique is going to be more reliable, more reproducible if done appropriately. Then there's going to be logic coming from the KVP for the generator itself compared with what the user specified so that the system can compensate for changing the KVP either higher or lower. So coming out from our ion chambers, where the gas within the ion chamber is ionized or electrons are essentially freed from that gas. Those free electrons are collected and then they are amplified here. We have an amplifier of the current coming out from the ion chambers. For the amplification process, there's then a comparison process which takes into account the KVP comparison with the reference the additional user interface of do you want more or less dose, as well as the signal which is coming from the ion chambers. The comparison reaches a point where a significant flux has been detected within those ion chambers. There will then be a break in the system here, which will stop the exposure. 
can see here the break in the system here, which stops the exposure and the x-rays are gonna be off after that point. If you're finding some value here, and I hope that you are, give us a thumbs up so we can spread this rad love to more people. What do you think the ion chamber should be? Should it be before or after the anti-scatter grid? So x-rays are coming in this direction. They're gonna pass through the anti-scatter grid. They're then going to be measured in our ion chamber and then measured at our image receptor. If we were to do it the other way around, where we were to put the ion chamber before our grid, in that case, we wouldn't be able to compensate for changes in the grid. So if we had a more attenuating grid, which we know is based on the Bucky factor, a more attenuating grid would end up not being compensated for properly. That is why we wanna have our measurement or our ion chamber be as close to the image receptor as possible. So the measurement that we're gonna to use to make the decision based on the ion chamber is very representative of what the image receptor is seeing. In old techniques, which were sometimes called photo timers, those could be placed behind the image receptor and you could use, for instance, a phosphor screen and a photodiode in order to measure the x-rays which are passing through our image receptor. Again, this was less sensitive because now it's relying on just kind of the leftover radiation, the radiation which was passed through our image receptor. So in this case, this is looking just about done and the time is up. The time is up now for our manual technique. And we've got to have some cream in here because we're not savages. Here's Luca. Check out part two of AEC where we talk about practical considerations of how to use it in the clinic.